All right, greetings, Go fans. I got my cup of tea. I got a game loaded for you. And not just any game. This is a game I was playing as a six don on Tygem, and I accidentally played against a Twitch Go streamer. And it was actually a person who I hadn't uh, ever seen before, but uh, he seemed really nice, and after the game, he sort of reached out and introduced himself. And so I thought I would introduce you to him as well. This is Ternamja, and he's a again, Korean six dawn on, on Taijim, and we had just a really nice game. It unfortunately got cut kind of short because of an unfortunate misclick, so it's not that long of a game, but during that game, we're going to see an archaic Joseki that I don't want you to play anymore. You got to stay tuned to see what that is, as well as uh, just, just some, hmm, should we say some in, intense middle? <laughs> just some, we, we, have, we have several groups all running to the same place, all, all looking for to make the best shape possible as quickly as possible. So uh, I think we can gain at least those two things in this game, so stay tuned. So in this game, I'm not gonna, yeah, let's, well, might as well turn the robot. I am white, and my opponent is black, and I've been doing this thing where if my opponent elongates one side, I'm going to elongate one side as well, just sort of as a, I don't know, an, an act of, of super high level balancing, right? I, as a white player, you always want to have an even number of good things to take, because my opponent takes one, then I take one, then my opponent takes one, then I take one, and then there's no more good things to take, but it's now my opponent's move. As that's a super high level reasoning behind it, I don't know how valid it is, but that's my theory, and I've been having success with it. My opponent approaches mine, totally natural, totally expected. Um, although the robot actually wants to break up. This is Katago, by the way. Hmm, interesting. This moves even, even on the robot's radar, but. Wow, and it, that actually really hates this? How is this possible? Is the robot broken? Robot's broken. Is that it? Is it okay? It's going weird. Okay. <laughs> All right, there we go. It 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 finally kicked in and is like yeah, we didn't actually change that much. There we go. No longer broken. Have no idea how I fixed it. Uh, and indeed, I play a robot move because I'm prone to do that, and I I contest the bottom. Uh, the three four approach is usually seen as slightly bigger than the four four approach, uh, even by the robot, which is why the robot wants to approach the three four first. But either way, we break it up. Um, robot likes my moves, and then oh, it's really weird how it kicks over. Like it, it like think 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 think, and then like <laughs> updates the display and kicks over. That's all right. Um, as uh, Katago, for those of you who haven't seen Katago in action, the green line is the win percentage. But the purple line is the score estimator. So, so in Katago, I'll actually try to, to some degree, maximize your score, uh, which is which is so much more human than most robots that try to win every game by a half point. Uh, anyway, uh, Ternamja plays this, you know, super strong, good, you know, just enclosure type back off, take the other side kind of move, and I come back over here to. Uh, basically play on my longest side while simultaneously defending my corner. So we both have a two against one. Uh, obviously, it this it feels like this should benefit black because it's black has the initiative, but white can manage. Um, black plays a good move. The robot wants to approach that one, doesn't matter. We're just gonna play this Joseki. And I play a little bit of a trick. It's just a, it's just a new robot Joseki that Ternamja didn't really know. And I get a little bit of an advantage out of this. And so this is, this is for those of you who've never seen it, um, this little tiger's mouth is usually a shape we avoid, right? This is a dumb shape because our opponent can Atari and use the defect that way, or just usually it's better to peep at this defect and force them to connect from this side. But in this case, I already have a stone here. So the peep on this side isn't very good. And black has a lot of cuts. So what black should do is just back off and wait to, you know, see, see what kind of Aji uh, black wants to use later because later on let's just throw some stones down maybe black will get this move and then this atari becomes really big right and so maybe we want to use this defect by actually getting more influence this way right that'd be good or uh maybe you know this becomes all worthless and black just wants the corner points and so black will want to use this defect this way but the point is black doesn't know and because of that we should just back off and wait. 
Ternamdra didn't know this. He just took this Atari right away. And then he has to come back and, and play here. And so, you know, this, this exchange might not seem like a really big deal. And, and in the grand scheme of things, it's really not. But it's a nice little subtle, subtle uh, example of a, you know, committing, committing your Aji before it's time. Go is very much about possibilities, and now he, you know, the black player, Ternamja, has made himself actually a lot weaker in this area, just unknowingly, by taking this quote-unquote free Atari, because he doesn't have um, this Ponuki and Atari uh, sequence later on. So I know it's, it's, like, it's like possibilities on top of possibilities, but that's how Go works. So if you, if you can kind of understand this, like black doesn't know if, you know, he wants the strength here, or if he wants to take just the corner cache, then you can't play either one. And so the robot looks at that commitment and says, let's turn the robot back on. Aha, now white is winning. <laughs> Not by a lot, you know, I think it's <laughs> basically a half point game. But before this, black was winning. And so we can see that here. And so it's just a little, it's just a little very subtle trick to sort of get your opponent to use up the Aji, um, which makes your, your game easier. Now you know uh, what you're, uh, where you're going to be stronger versus weaker, right? Your opponent can't get, gain strength in that area. All right. All right, so now I play my own sort of old bad move. I'm looking at this corner and thinking, hey, I should defend this stone. And I do it with this old Joseki. Uh, the robot, I'm, I'm still waiting for it to like even look at a move on this side of the board. The robot doesn't think this is important at all, which is amazing to me, right? But in the robot's defense, Black doesn't have this Aji anymore to build a big wall here. Um, these are all really low stones. And yeah, Black can attack this and make something out of it, but we have actually some real like strength. <laughs> we have a little bit of a wall going up to the fourth line. And so I think the robot's thinking this is actually the side with the biggest potential. It's actually not this, which is kind of mind blowing, but um, I don't I don't think my move is really as bad as the robot says. But what I do next kind of is because watch, uh, I play this old Joseki and some of you might know this one, some of you might not. It's where you, you first attach to the corner and then circle around the corner and take the outside. But this is not a good Joseki. This is, this is usually a good Joseki when you have the ladder, or it's good enough. But it's not really a good Joseki when Black already has a stone here. Um, because this is the sequence, normally, and then connect. And so you end up with this wall, the stone gets cut off, but Black has this immediate cut here. And if we play it out like it should have gone, Basically, you get this wall and have a hard time deciding on what to do next. Like, you can sort of balance the wall, but, you know, let's just back off. Do, do. Um, let's just take the bottom for black on a large scale, right? That's That just instantly turns into something very large. So this wall, is, it's nice to have a wall, but it's just the fact that it can be cut. When there isn't a stone right here, uh, this, this cut isn't as possible, right? Like, white can just ladder this. Um, although, no, <laughs> because there's a stone here, this ladder is immediately broken, right? Broken ladder, so no good. But, uh, so what should, well, first of all, what should white do in this case, if, if you insist on playing this? Well, according to the robot, Tanuki. <laughs> Isn't that mind-blowing? Um, the second best option is still what I did. Really? Oh, wow. Okay. So second best option really is, but the robot actually um, also likes just connecting here. <laughs> and this is just so dumb looking, right? Humans hate playing this, but the robot's like, it's a fine. <laughs> you know, you're not, you're not going to come out with a major advantage, but this is just connecting here. You're still leaving Aji. You're, you're settled. It's fine. So I think that's kind of interesting. So again, here, let's say white plays here. How does black attack take advantage of the stone here? In this case, the robot's still like, go go do other things on the board. <laughs> the robot does not want to finish the shape. Let's just back off here. Now, at this point, it's considering playing this out. So not until you define a little more of the top left. All right. Okay. In the game, uh, I play this Joseki, which is real dubious. But then this is, this is the most embarrassing part of the game because uh, neither of us really settle this. We leave it at this point. And look at that! Look at that robot score, right? We have a we have almost a one and a half. 
advantage, you know, 60 to 40, um, 3 to 2 advantage uh, for black. But once black doesn't take advantage of this, it just swings hard the other way. And why is that? Well, it's because white has this descend. And if black has to take the corner now, white actually gets a very solid sealed in shape on the outside and the stone actually really does look dumb. And if black cuts right away, not a big problem. White can either just settle both sides or can do some sort of fancy net give up sacrifice thing. And oh man, look at that wall. This is the beautiful wall on both sides. And also look at that win percentage and score. White is just up by 10 and a half at this point. All right. So here's the embarrassing part of this game. Because we played this old Joseki, and I think I think both of us knew, I didn't I didn't talk to him about this corner specifically after the game, but both of us knew that this was not quite the right Joseki. Like the robots don't play this anymore. Uh, we both just kept tanuking it. And so the robot goes a little mad. It's like this descend is actually really big for white, right? And this cut is really big for black. But neither of us play it. And so I play this very loose pincer. Um, the robot prefers anything tighter. It's not... So how different is it if I play this one? This is 40% on the win. 38, so it's an extra 2%. Um, I'm just trying to maintain a little bit better balance between this corner. Um, but... Uh, I guess what Black really wants... Or what, what, sorry, what the robot really wants me to do is to fight here. And just a little fight. Oh man, nice fight. And so, yeah, part of that is pushing the stone a little bit closer will help that fight. Uh, I do neither of these after I play here. Black does lean, um, but I just I just crawl. I don't I don't try to fight here. And the reason why I think I mean traditionally this would seem good for white because these three black stones are just not doing anything. Like they're not they're not able to make a moyo, right? It's like black is building wall facing nothing. This stone is too far to really pincer it. Uh, it it's just it feels like nothing to a human, but man, do the robots think this is a much stronger shape because of the follow-ups. Um, we have a push, we have a push cut, and we have an attachment here for this black group to get instantly stronger whenever it needs to. And meanwhile, this is not a lot of points for white. So, uh, yeah, this this one-two punch, approach and then lean, it's still like all the robots' favorite thing to do. And it's one of the weirdest things to play Go as a human. Um... In this case, yeah. <laughs> again, still bigger to play over here. Um, so again, the robot's still a little bit unhappy. <laughs> uh, but Black's going to continue leaning, right? Black has can use any of this Aji whenever it needs to, so it's not like it's an immediate need. Um, but we continue pushing. And I think this is very kind of pig-headed. Like, I don't, I don't think my opponent needs to do any of this at this point. Again, you can still see the robot still saying, like, play down here, play down here, forget all this. This isn't important. Uh, but my opponent is really just trying real hard to make shape. And meanwhile, I actually start making some real territory. You know, he's, he is getting central strength by giving me some more points. Uh, but here, uh, we start the next fight. <laughs> so not only is this fight sort of unfinished, we have this group cut by this one stone and this group. And after I extend here, this, this cross-cut fight is complete. The robot doesn't know what's going on. It's like, uh, who knows? <laughs> we just have a fight. And who can settle, and especially who can profit while settling here. Um, Black plays a good move. Again, I like this move. The robot actually says, let's see, this is a 46%. It's almost the same. It does, the robot does like this better. Um, attachment to these middle, ex large extension third line stones is this really flexible, again, a, a move that's really not been on most humans' radars for, you know, centuries. <laughs> but the robots, oh man, the robots really like it. Let's see here. And even, it still wants to Tanuki, so this is kind of... Which one is it liking the best? Looks like it likes this one the best. Again, if white just backs off, well, it wants to use the Saji first, but basically black can just kind of settle while putting more pressure on this, right? Once everything you extend into the middle is threatening these two stones. So, reasonable. Still not what's really important, 
but possible. All right, so anyway, black plays a sort of balancing move to help out this group. And uh, I, I, this is a little bit of a greedy move. <laughs> um, robot certainly doesn't like it. Again, the zigzagging is because neither of us were playing this down here. Um, locally, looks like the robot wants to just strengthen this group, right? This stone is indirectly attacking this, so I should just help it out immediately. And that's just good go sense. This makes sense to from a very natural st standpoint. But man, I'm like, mm, I have this little bit of wall here. Uh, I'm going to put some pressure on the corner. These two stones can fend for themselves. Not the right direction. Still a 50-50 game. No idea what's going to happen. Opponent backs off. In this case, he shouldn't. <laughs> She's going to play a move in the center or this cut. So this this was actually a really good exchange for me now. All right, because now these this little extension has a little bit of a balancing stone. And uh, I use this sort of one space jump to now attack these two stones. So now we have two stones versus two stones fight. He has that stone balancing and attacking. I have this stone balancing and attacking. And so it feels pretty symmetrical. Um, but you can see the, the graph is actually sort of peaked for black here and is just slowly making its way down. The longer this goes on without black cutting here, uh, the game, the robot starts liking white more and more. Uh, black takes this cut, which is reasonable. Um, I think, yeah, in the game, yeah, this one should play this cut first, though, because this just leaves all this little bit of Aji. And that's, for the health of these two stones, that's really important. Because, yes, black really wants to put a stone here. Because um, if you can look at this Aji, there's a lot of ways for black to use this. None of it, none of it is, like, game over winning kind of killing stuff. But it's, again, about the health of this stick and these two stones. And whichever way white defends, basically black's going to take free stuff on the other side, right? If white defends over here, now black can take free stuff in the corner. And extend. Here, I'll take this Atari. And it even, wow, it even wants more Aji here. It's like, play this one. Yeah, look at, look at more free stuff. Hmm. Okay, still cut. Um, this stone, what we're really going to use it for, right, is to cut off these two stones later on. So we got, we got a little bit of corner. Um, black doesn't want, no, necessarily know how... Um, to finish this corner yet, right? If we play this, um, white will sneak in this way. So ideally, we'd like to play this. But if we play this, there's a cut here. So if we're strong enough, we want to play this one. If we're not strong enough, then we want to play something else. So these little cuts don't do anything directly, but they let black sneak into the corner or, or separate. And that's why we're asking questions. The problem is he asked this question which is kind of the wrong question, because now all of a sudden the, all these cuts over here don't work. Uh, so we can play this one. That's good. Robot says here. White still has to defend. Oh man, if white has to defend there, that's real painful. Does it work? Oh wow, this move. The moves crazy. This move? I did not see this. <laughs> no idea. And this this is this is amazing. Oh man, I didn't I didn't see this at all in my initial review. Like this move is is the hum superhuman natural move, right? Like there's some Aji here. These three stones don't have a lot of liberties. There's two stones that are nearby that are theoretical friends, but really they're they're there's a little bit of separation. We want to play a move that helps out these two stones as well. So just keeping them separate seems super logical. Um, but after this, it's like everything can kind of fend for itself for white. Like, we're not really putting any pressure on anything, and there is a potential cut here. Um, so if we just... This is, the, this is the game, actually. Like, this is the actual game sequence. If we just play here, um, the robot really doesn't like it. The robot's totally like, yeah, yeah, white's is totally cool. Like, <laughs> especially if white can play there. And even if white doesn't, look at all these moves. These are all well above 60%. Um, but here, if we try this way, let's try this way again, because I want to show you how cool this is. Yeah, if I, if I just defend, right, because this, the way to respond to this is by defending. And where's the follow-up over here? There's not a good follow-up here. This is so much more severe, right, because now black's actually going to push through. 
And now we're talking about real damage to these white two stones. Real, real knife fight kind of kind of damage. But if white connects, if white says no, no knife fight, this pseudo net doesn't really work. And then this empty triangle to short the liberties anyway is magical. Look at this. And then just to link up, like there's a push cut Atari here, right? Uh, to completely separate these three stones, to connect up to these two, right? There's no push here, right? No push cut because of this stone. Um, yeah, we've, we've just completely separated these three stones in, in such a, you know, more aggressive way. Then if we just try to, oops, play the game. Like, these two stones have so much more wiggle room. Do you feel it? Like, um, just with the potential connection here. Like, there's just more space. So way too much wiggle room. Anyway, I push out. Seems natural. Keeps the black group separated. And as long as this group is weak, I, you know, my two stones are strong. And then he plays this move. I thought in the move, this was a really nice game. This is really good timing. Uh, definitely increased the amount I needed to read. Uh, and these two stones, again, you can feel this stone working now. If you guys remember way back when Black played this sort of balancing move from the wall to make sure the wall had some semblance of safety, it was also threatening these two stones. You can now feel the power because if white runs this way, it's going to run white into, right into this stone. Right? Or even just there. <laughs> like, where is white going to go? White has to try to cut this off somehow. It's real hard. So can't go that way. Have to go towards the weak group side. Oops, actually, <laughs> robot says give up. <laughs> it don't matter. <laughs> take this, take this, take this. And then black just captures these two. Wow. Huh. All right. Man. Yep, look at this. Still zigzagging so hard because we didn't settle this old Joseki. All right. Here. I play this one, and he jumps out this way, though, uh, according to the robot, it seems like should make this... This is actually how I thought he would push here for first, too. Um, but in the game, he just jumped out. He was more worried about the weak group. But it's all about timing, right? You can play here, and then you can get out the group. And so in this case, you know, this, this weak group isn't really that much weaker. Like, it's a little bit weaker than in the game. But at the same time, this group is a lot stronger, right? These two stones actually have a lot more power. So it's a little subtle. It's like, where do you draw the line, right? Like, where where do you actually force white to run out? How close to this group do you want to force it? And in the game, right, our opponent said, no, 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 we're not. <laughs> we're just letting white sort of fight out directly. <laughs> Robot's really having a, a hard time with this. Robot says I should also push out one more time, which is fine. It does give black time to sort of loosely connect and fix all this stuff, but white gets out cleanly and really has no problems. So I was a little bit more aggressive in this in the game when I played here. And oh man, so so this this is like a really good example of middle area fighting where humans would just go, we can't, we don't know who's winning. Like it's just. Or at least certainly at my level, right? I can look at this and go, I, I have no idea. Until this is settled, like, don't know. Like, there's just no way to evaluate it. But isn't it amazing, right, that Katago is like, no, 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 white, 80%. <laughs> this is, like, totally cool. Uh, yep, so, yep, one of, the, one of the valid moves. Basically, again, cut off the two different stones. Um, this does make this push cut available, too. I'm not, I didn't, I wasn't actually sure in the game if I could do it yet. Um, so I played this move first, which is really also not a bad move. Um, I was really just looking to make this group stronger. I wasn't even really thinking I could kill this. Um, I thought this would be a reach to try to really aggressively kill this, especially given the four stones are still kind of behind enemy lines, like Black has this netting type of move uh, to, to just hem in. So... Um, I want I want to make this group stronger, and so we played this, and then this this here. My opponent should play here, 
But this is a really cool sequence. Check this out. Look at this cove thing. Oh, I actually don't even connect the code, just come out this way, yep. Black takes and then white pushes. And so here, here's, here's ideally if we were both really good at go, like really, really good at go, here's the type of thing that should have happened, right? Black should have basically gotten a pretty strong shape, but really minimized. And white will have Sente to come out and around and basically, you know, basically be connected to these three stones. You have black and cut, but there's a code to keep them connected. And so, uh, and white is still threatening to push through and cut off this stone. So white takes control of the center in this variation, where black just sort of settles the, the wall. But this, this wall never took enough points. It was just harassed. So if white takes command of the center, this black group looks real weak again. Feels real good. That's how it should have gone. But, uh, Ternamja, he, he said after the game, he just misclicked. Like, this is just a misclick. I thought at the time, I thought it was like, oh, that's a really inventive answer. Um, like, I, I mean, I only thought that for a few seconds, but <laughs> I was like, oh, I was like, oh, he thinks he can either connect and take the corner, uh, if I take this or, um, you know, I don't, I don't, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I guess it just doesn't work. <laughs> it's just a really bad move. It just totally ignores the situation at hand. So after after looking at it, I spent some clock time here and just looked at it and went, oh, well, this this is actually not good. <laughs> and the robot agrees. Um, I, I sort of give him one chance. The robot's like, yeah, you should just push cut here immediately. Um, there's just no good response here. Like, if black tries this... Like, it's just pain. Like, look at this black group just getting eated. <laughs> oh, let's see. Oh, black is, <laughs> black is like, give up. <laughs> just give up the group. But here, let's try to fight our way out. Of oh, the fight it out moves, it looks like this one's the best. Oh, it's, oh, I can't even play this one, right? This is just shortage of liberties. So maybe that one? And if we connect? Yeah, there's just this awful net. Like, there's just, there's, there actually is just no saving it. Isn't that amazing? What if we do... Can we do this way? Okay, so black can save it this way. All right, so this is this is actually more what I expected, which is why I played this Atari first, because black would try to save this. Um, but in the game, I take this Atari first to guarantee I can kill this. And once he connects here, I can just kill it, right? This is um, dead. But black has a group he can make live in the corner, and or, I guess it's an or situation, black can choose to go after the middle group and, and take control of the center again. And in this case, black took control of, or not took control, but decided to take the corner, which means I get to have the first move out, and I, once again, black, white is in command of the center. So, after this point, it's, we, you know, we play this out for a while longer, I'll play it out to the end, um, but bas basically this, this misclick just, you know, there, there's there's not much hope for black. It's real hard. Like, it's real suffering. My white wall now starts to become an influence, right? You can see this this black group is just sort of hanging on, trying to run somewhere. Uh, he stays connected. Connects with that move, which is interesting, because it's totally not on the robot's radar. Robot's like, that's a sabaki shape. You just don't even try to defend it. <laughs> just treat it as real flexible and ready to give up if need be. Yeah, Black should try to put some pressure on this to solidify this group first. Um, but anyway, Black defended over here. I jumped out to keep my stick group kind of safe. Jumps out. I play this corner sequence. And this is actually a cool sequence because in, in the the way it really ended, um, turned out, I just I just outread him on a on a corner problem, basically. And I take this cut, which the robot does not recommend, which is interesting. The robot's like, just be safe, dude. Just just be safe. <laughs> and Because now this preserves the connection over here, right? <laughs> mm, there. No, wrong. Should play there. If you disconnect, let's again, threaten the connection. Get out. I don't know. Get out, attack this. It's just, it's just, you have four groups running, right? This white group is running that way, this black group is running this way, this white group is running this way, and this black group is running that way. And so, <laughs> white, black has one stone, but I actually have the next closest influence. So it seems totally great for me. I try something a little more violent. Here's my sequence. I cut here. 
because uh, I read this, <coughs> you know, pretty cool, uh, pretty cool variation, I thought. Yes, because I saw this move. So I, I, once I cut, I play this wedge. He has to defend somehow. He defends that way. And now, oh man, the robot doesn't even, the robot wants to play there? All right, this is my move. I thought this is the move I saw in the game that was totally cool. It was just killer. Just, just makes black real sad. <laughs> Uh, what should black is like? <laughs> Robot says black tanuki. Um, but this, this here, let's show you this move. If we play the next best robot move, which he does is play here. This just doesn't work, right? Like the robot, the robot says this is actually, this is the next best move in this game for black, but this just doesn't work. Like it doesn't matter. You can keep crawling. Robot says this is better. Oh, really? And even this? This is better? Oh, this is definitely better, okay. <laughs> this is just comical. <laughs> so you have this black group. Like, what is this black group gonna do? I don't know. It's It looks real toast. Robot says keep on fighting. Okay. Oh, well, maybe. Cut? Alright, we're... Oh, nope, not even give up. <laughs> okay, give up. We're back to give up. Here, here, here. It's, it's sad. The robot is sad. <laughs> it just died. Okay. I think, I think it's one of those cases where the robot's like, you just try it. Like, like you're already losing, so you just try it. Which is kind of weird. All right, so the game I played here, he descended again, I descend again. Uh, and then, oh. is this not the game? Oh yeah, he just he just resigned here. This is the resign point. Because at this point you can't save the, the four black stones. Like you can't do anything. You might be able to get some Aji over here, but this corner is just dead. Um, this group, this black group is a little bit stronger. It has the potential to make a base, but it's still not alive. Um, but in, and especially if black doesn't want the whole white side to become 50 points, black needs to actually work over here to make sure it's not 50 points, even though there's Aji. Like, let's see the sequence. You know, it just connects. Like, you can see how this is just a lot. Oh, man. I lost that one. There you go. It's 50 points. <laughs> anyway, uh, this was a fun little game. I'm glad I got to meet a Twitch Go streamer. Do check out Turnamja's channel. Uh, it was, you know, it was nice. I hope we play again. Um, I think I added him as a friend online, so if I see him online, we'll we'll do that again. We'll have another fair game where he doesn't misclick. Uh, but yeah, I think the two big takeaways. If we go all the way back here. The biggest one is this Joseki, right? This is an old Joseki down here and so white doesn't play this like we just we just don't want to play this way yeah probably better off just to come and play that let's see what let's see what the robot actually likes better this is a minus 2.1 this is a 1.7 it actually still likes this better which is kind of amazing All right, it's still the robot still says it's actually kind of one of the better local sequences, but I don't know. I've seen robots just back off a lot more these days. Play that way. Uh, so anyway, that was the first big takeaway. The second big takeaway is just this this central middle cut fight. You can't be scared just to play moves that are going to take control of the center, um, especially after my opponent sort of cut on the wrong side. I had I had a lot of momentum. We both just made a lot of mistakes in here with the timing of these moves, right? We both kind of ended up playing in the right direction by just a lot of little mistakes. Um, yeah, because neither of us finished this Joseki, right? We just had one unfinished Joseki. Uh, so, like this move, greedy, right? Mistake. <laughs> this move, mistake. <laughs> just take control of the center. Just gotta take control of the center. And once you do that, whoever whoever can do that will have the advantage going on. So I, I hope you enjoyed this little game review, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.